So I get out of the boat as much as I can when I fish. I'm throwing this little eighth ounce finesse little jig with a little craw in the back. I've had a lot of success on this, especially on rivers. It's this little tiny island right here. I try to get out and stand the water as much as I can. I have more control and that way I'm not affected by the current so much. And what this island does is there's a current break right here for the next, I would say 50 feet or so before the current converges back together from either side of the island. So what I like to do is go on the island, stand here, cast multiple baits. I know these places hold fish and I know that it takes the right bait in these situations to catch the fish. They're just not gonna hit anything. So I'm gonna throw this bottom bouncer. I'm gonna throw the moving bait with my spinner. I'm gonna throw the top water. If that doesn't work, I'll move on. I usually have pretty good luck in these areas. There's people driving on the road right there watching me. Probably wondering what the heck is that lunatic doing out there standing in the middle of the river? Who does that? All right, let's try some top water. Okay, no success, we're out of here. Got him. What the heck is this? Little pike, again. Ooh, there's the thrashing. Hiding right behind that tree right there. Band just came out and nailed it. Okay. That was in there good too. That big hook was not coming out. All right. A little bigger than the one I caught yesterday on this bait, but figured something's gotta hit that spinner bait eventually. See you guys. Got him. Little bass, I think. Holding them down to the side and just trying to reel them in. Yeah. Oh, stay out of there. I may anchor down. There we go. Oh, got him. <laughs> Oh, I caught this thing on the side. Swiped at it and I got him. It's probably why it felt so weird when it was, don't want to hurt him, I better get. Oh, I've had fish swipe in there like three times and miss it. I finally got this one on the side. Hopefully his bigger brother or dad's up there. See, I've got my anchor down right here. I don't know if you can see that. And that fish almost got wrapped around in there. I would have had a big old mess. Let's see if we can get a couple more. It's working this island here. There's slack water. Fish are ambushing smaller fish from either side of the island as they come around it. I'm hoping to. All right, one more. Got him. Another little one, I think. Oh, oh, a pike. Second, oh boy, gotta be careful here. Trouble hooks. Be really careful. There we go. Nice. A <laughs> little tiny pike, just like. The one I caught before, way upstream though. Now I'm downstream. It's been about literally two hours since I caught that first pike. It's been a grind out here, but it's kind of fun on the top water. I didn't expect pike to be in moving water and rock like that. It's usually smallmouth territory, but it goes to show you never know until you try. Oh, this one was not coming out of here. I was wondering why it wasn't fighting as hard. That explains it. Oh, slipped out. That explains it. Like just don't fight as hard as smallmouth pound for pound, so. All right, try to throw my jig in there and see what else is down there. I 
I just missed a fish right next to that log. Sneak up there. <coughs> As I'm coughing. Got him. Got him that time. Oh, good. I don't have a net. Like I said yesterday, so I keep forgetting a net when I go in the river, which isn't good. because you could get a big muskie or a pike that you can't get. All right, let's try to keep my videos under 10 minutes, so I gotta get this one in. Oh, okay. There we go, nice, perfect. That thing was in there good, look at this hook. Coming way up out here. Thing was not getting out when I set the hook. Wow. It's not a huge, huge fish, but it's definitely a little chunk or a little football. If you look how wide it is, it's super fat right there. That's a fun one. Hide right behind that log. Missed it the first time, came back and got it. Sweet. All right, hopefully you guys can all hear me. It's kind of noisy with the rapids right here and I've got people fishing around me so I don't want to be like talking too loud and kind of being annoying. But one of the reasons why I've had success fishing over the years is not because I'm super smart and better than everybody else. It's not it at all. I am blessed to have really good teachers in my life, great mentors. I spend a lot of time studying new techniques, different baits, how to use them, where to fish, water clarity, depth, temperature, you name it. I spend a lot of time doing that, which is also why I've had success. But it's something I haven't talked about on this channel. And there's, there's three reasons why. It's one philosophy and three reasons why. And I will not go in the boat or fishing in general without three types of baits. Number one, I have to have something on the bottom. Bottom bouncer, dragging something. It could be anything from a skirted jig to a jig and wrap to a Carolina rig, anything. Something has to bounce on the bottom. Number two, I have to have a moving bait, a mid-level moving bait. That could be a spinner, jerk bait, uh, cast and retrieve for Paula, you name it, there's tons of baits. That's the most common way people fish, especially people beginning because you simply cast it out and retrieve it most of the time. And then the third thing that I always use, number three, is a topwater bait. You have to have all three columns figured out. Now you can take that mid-level bait and determine where you want it. You can have it on a shallow crank and only go four feet below the surface. You can have a deep diving crank and go to 15 feet below the surface. There's a million different options. And what I found is that if you use all three consistently and go through them, you're gonna have success. Like tonight's been a grind. I've been out here for four or five hours. I caught four fish, two smallies and two pike. Not big, but the reason why I caught them is because I use all three different types of baits. I caught two on the whopper plopper. I caught one on the spinner bait and I caught another one on a jig just now the bigger smallmouth of the night that I just caught. It's because I use all three. Had I used the spinner bait to try to catch the fish that I caught the jig on, it probably wouldn't have bit. It's probably hunkered down next to cover, not moving. It's gonna work and not give up any energy, any calories, unless it absolutely has to, or the bait lands literally right over the fish's head. That's why jigs are so effective, because fish don't have to work hard. Uh, spinner baits are a reaction, and so are top water. But without those three different presentations, I wouldn't have four fish. I'm not bragging about the four fish that I caught. I'm not having a, a great night by any means, but it's been a really tough night. I know there's a lot of big fish in here, and I know there's a lot of bigger fish in here. And so it's, it's something that you just have to figure out. So if you ever wonder, what should I take in the boat? You have three rods, take a top water, take a middle level swimming bait. It could be a swim bait, it could be a boop tail, it could be Rapala, it could be a jerk bait, anything. Something in the middle of the column because fish sometimes react to that better. And something on the bottom, like a jig, Carolina rig, jig and wrap, like I mentioned before. Try those three things and something will work. And whatever you find works, stick with it. In this case, all three is working tonight. I'm getting pretty lucky, but I still haven't caught a lot of fish, which is a little strange because usually when all three baits work, 
top, middle, and bottom. It's usually a night where you can literally just throw anything out there and they'll bite it.